Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. About three months ago, we did a long-term review of our CF Moto U-Force side-by-side -side and our CF Moto C-Force ATV. And in that video, I talked about the good, the bad, and today we're gonna fix everything that I complained about with those machines. But first, we've gotta get them rinsed off. Don't ever take your machines to the dealer without cleaning them first. They will charge you to clean them, which they should. It's not their job to clean your machine before they work on it. Uh, we've also done a video on this pressure washer station. This is probably one of the best things I've done for keeping the equipment clean. It's so easy to get set up. Turn the water on, spool the reel out, turn the pressure washer on. And we're pressure washing, that easy. And then retracting it. Just as simple as that. In that video, I put together a parts list of everything you would need in our Amazon store. So if you wanna check that out, I highly recommend doing something like that. Right, guys so we made it up here to our cf moto dealer three c's recreation this is going to be kind of a two-part collaboration between three c's recreation and zach curran with cf moto parts usa.com uh, he's the one who's supplying the parts that are going to help us fix the two major issues that i have with these machines he's also a cf moto dealer but he's like four or six hours away whereas you're only you're my local cf moto dealer here yeah. so zach shipped the parts here. to Jared here with three C's. We're gonna get them installed today, but we haven't even told you what I don't like about these machines. And there's two things. The, the biggest one is the clutching in these machines. We've talked about it before. Um, the U-Force 1000 is a little jerky from the factory. And so we've got a clutch kit to, to solve that. And then the C-Force 600, it just doesn't have kind of that low end grunt that a lot of people like for trail riding, like a Grizzly 700 or a Suzuki King Quad 750. Um, and I think from what I've seen online of other people doing these clutch kits, it really brings that low end torque alive in the C4 600. So the other thing we're gonna fix here today is the cab on the U-Force 1000. Is just, it's great in the winter time, but it's a little too hot in the summertime. We've talked about it before, the, the windows on the cab. And it just tilt open like an old school truck. Yeah, they tilt open just a very small amount and in the summertime, it's just, it's too high. It doesn't let enough air in. Yeah. So we're gonna replace our fixed windshield with a tip up windshield. So when it's hot out, we can just tip the windshield right up and yeah. uh, get plenty of airflow inside the cab. But the only thing with this one, this is a 22 model? Tw yes, 20, 22. That's okay. a 21, that's a 22. So like, just for you folks at home, the 23s and 24s, they keep working on clutching stock. So like, yeah. Uh, 20, 19 was the first year for this and it was really bad and then it's continually gotten better so like if you're buying one it's not and this one's got some time on it now so maybe with like all on firewood and stuff like wearing the belt in so we'll see how the belt looks too yeah so there's like some wear factors in there along with it but um yeah like what you said let's try to fix it and make it better yeah so let's do it together and uh film it, let's see how it does. yeah i mean it's not something that you can't get used to i've obviously have run this machine for two years now i've gotten used to it right. the problem lies in when you let other people drive your machine yes. like we went on a cruise back in January and my father-in-law was house sitting for us and he plowed the driveway and I was watching him on our security camera see and I machine. could I could see him <laughs> struggling to feather the gas pedal. Um, so anyway, yeah, let's yeah. show you real quick uh, the before of, of how these clutches engage and then we'll get the work done and we'll show you what they look like after. All right, so let's start it up. Let the fuel injection do its thing. Okay, so we're gonna start first in high gear. And I'm not going to baby the throttle like I usually do. I'm gonna run it like I was a brand new person test driving this machine. So, so the high gear is fairly smooth. And I've mentioned that before, low gear is much, low gear and reverse are much, much jerkier.
Okay, so now we'll do low gear. See, that's that jerk that I want to get rid of. And it's the same in reverse. Now, because I've run this machine for you know, two plus years, I can take off smoothly in low gear. I'll show you what that looks like just by baby in the throttle. See, it still has a little bit of a kick to it. And if you put somebody in here who's not used to running the machine, that's what it turns a lot of people off. We'll go back to reverse. So that's what we're trying to fix with this machine. All right, now on to the C4 600. And again, this one is an entirely different issue. We're actually looking for a little bit more low end grunt for trail riding and, you know, a little more aggressive riding. So high gear to start. So this one has a very smooth takeoff. I mean, it takes off pretty good, but you can see the RPMs we're running at. So if you're not a motorhead at all, this is where on the machine the clutch is. Uh, CF Moto runs CV Tech clutching. And so we're going to get that pulled off and then we'll show you kind of the innards of the clutch and how it works and how we're going to change the drive engagement of the machine. It's pretty clean. You don't have any dirt, which is nice. So if you were a mud bog guy, that's usually where the issues arise. <laughs> yeah, I pretty much primarily just use this for trail riding. And like Chris said, this is reverse threaded, so you want to make sure if you're going to do this at home, you do it right. And he just marked the outer cover here. You have to make sure this stays lined up because it's all balanced. You can see it's been grooved out here with like a drill bit. That's, they, they spin these, and you got to make sure that it's balanced right. So they took some material out of it there just to balance it. So you can see right here is the spring, and we'll show you the kit on the counter here next, what Zach sent us, and we'll go from there. So we got the front half of the primary off and we're gonna open this cover to you guys a first hand view of this. So this is on the bottom side of here. This is where our pucks are riding as the spring pushes out and this whole thing moves. If I can get it back on. This whole, this thing is it's doing this motion up and down as you accelerate. And these are the pucks inside of here. And inside of this puck is where the weight is. And so for this customer, for this engineer that designed this kit, they have a spring and a pack of weights and they're different weight compared to what's in here now. And it just totally depends on like what their end goal is, who designed it. You can have different stiffnesses of spring with different weights. So it's just. So this is, this is the spring that we just took off. Yeah, right? there you go. So, so you can see how, so it's pretty soft, but it's really tall. This one's this shorter, one. but it's stiffer. So. It's incredible like how many differences there are and what can be so that's that's what we got from Zach with the new helix and real quick I want to show you an example of a customer that used high range when they shouldn't have and this is more of like a, a me talking to a customer when they're buying a machine but to give you guys the example so this machine only has 20 miles on it it's a brand new 950 HOEX so it's got a ton of power the guy was stuck in a crick and he was in high range he never he never stopped and put it in low and low is super important to use. You can see on here how worn the belt, it was just smoking hot. I'm sure you could smell the belt just like that burnt rubber smell because there's a lot of belt still on here. And these clutch pucks, so I guess the point is your machine has almost 800 miles on it and you've done a great job of using high range and low range because your pucks look great. Like everything looks fine in here. And the bottom side, if I flip it over without losing all those, you can see like there's no burnt belt on there. Everything looks really good. Come in and look at how 
burn, like half of his pucks are literally stuck on the inside there. Melt into the aluminum. Yeah, and like you can't, you know, we've tried to like chip that out of there and help <clears throat> customers out and like you spend so much labor and you're trying to polish those surfaces, it doesn't, doesn't work out. A lot of the problems that you see with people complaining about whatever brand four-wheeler they have or ATV, UTV is not brand related. It's maybe uh, educating the customer and I'm so picky. If you buy a machine from us, I'm like, I need to explain to you how to use low range and how to use high range all the time. Cause I feel like they go home and like they didn't listen. And the first thing they do is they do this kind of situation. So if user, you're, user error. Yeah. If you're having a bad experience with your machine, I, I like 50% of me when I'm talking to the customer on the phone, I feel like it's user error and I'm not trying to be rude. It's just, that's how quick you can burn a clutch. Cause there's so much power behind them. You, you just don't know, like it's got so much power, it's doing it, but it's doing it wrong. So yeah, I think a lot of the problem is a lot of people don't understand how the machine is delivering that power, how it's, yeah. how the clutch works yeah. and all that. So, so this is just a bad example. This is not Adam's unit. Uh, just wanted to show folks what can go wrong. So yeah, 20, gonna, 20 miles, 800 miles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't matter the mileage. So we're going to put the new weights in here. We're going to put the new spring in and then we'll get the secondary apart and we'll get the new helix put in as well. Perfect. So right here is the difference between the stock spring and the stock weight versus the new clutch kit and weight spring that we're going to be throwing in. This one's aluminum and this one's steel. So it's funny, you know, it doesn't matter who it is. Engineer just had a different idea. Yeah. Different so. size and weights. Yep. So this is Adam's belt out of the 600 ATV here. And so um, people always like wonder like how belts wear. And so it's not the wear top and bottom that we're worried about, it's the side angles. Because what happens is, uh, I'll use the bad clutch here. Your belt is actually being pinched like this. So it's the side of the belt that's being worn on. And what I'm usually looking for, it's called like the hourglass shape. So like if you're running your fingers like this, then all of a sudden if you felt like a dip, that means that's where the belt got burnt. Cause it got, your primary is just spinning like crazy in that one spot and the belt's not moving. And so that's what creates that hourglass and that's what creates all this worn off belt down here is I don't have that old belt anymore, but it had the hourglass shape to it. And if I go like this, it's an old snowmobile trick. You just kind of run it and you're like, whoop. I'm like, oh, you can feel it. Oh yeah. Yeah. You just go, your fingers go in. So your belt's in good shape. You said um, there was one spot that looked a little. Yeah. Like I'm wondering like here a little bit, like. Um, you can see like these like little flakes of it coming off right here a little bit. It's fine. Like I think you can run this for quite a while, but like that's part of like the experience of like if you think it's starting to get jerky like a pond takeoff and it's a four year old machine. Like little things like this are kind of adding up to make that bigger problem. So yeah. um, you, you're in the video. Your six hundred took off really well. Yeah. And so with a thousand miles, that's great. So. I wouldn't change it, but I would just keep it in your mind if you felt like later in life it was like jerkier and jerkier. Now that you've had one of these apart and have seen what's going on, yeah, that's part of your problem. So. There's usually a spacer in there. Yeah. Right there. Just make sure that stays on at the factory. They align them. Yep. So that spacer's got to stay put. This is why I wanted to have somebody else do it because you need some special tooling and pullers and I'm stuff like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can do it without. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that that's completely under spring pressure right now, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's got a, a circuit on the inside of there that, the that's holding it in. So this guy right here, this is our new one that's going to go in. Yeah. All they're doing is they're changing the angles, the profile, so that it shifts different. Okay. So the secondary clutch is usually torque sensing, so it's sensing the load. The primary clutch is sensing the engine RPM. So when the two work together to shift to yep. keep your engine in its maximum horsepower and let the clutches shift. Okay. 
but I don't know how this is going to stay in there. Sure. There's different holes you can put them in. There's a there's a B hole here. You can kind of see it scribbled down below. There's an A because I know Zach was telling me about A. Zach was saying if you had like oversized tires, uh, you'd want to go to the A. That's because the gears, the machine different. The tires are bigger. Down. Yeah. So now your gear ratios are different. So they tend to add a different Spacey. pressure to the spring, so the machine will shift better. So we can leave that exactly where it was. And then on the top of here, there was difference. Yeah, so he's gonna get that into the to the B. So there's there's four different spots on this as well, and we're gonna go in the one. So we'll get it down in the slot that they want there. And then the one hole. In there. I think we gotta wanna set this in here. I think so too. Otherwise you're gonna gotta yeah. bend it around the But that's why these are so long, so that yes. you can put it back together. Yeah. So I can just right back down. Check that out. Yeah, we just want to make sure that we're Passing. coming down on the right side of the rollers. And the keyway would help us do that. The, the keyway does, correct. Got maybe that's mostly the point of it. I'm excited for you to see what it does. I am too. <laughs> like I said, I. I'm skeptical on how much of a difference it's going to make because I've seen some people that were kind of had big hopes for it and then they were a little underwhelmed with the difference that it made. So I'm a clutch kit does not give you any more horsepower, it just uses what you have differently. Yeah. So it really depends on your your goal. Your end goal. Like yeah. if you were gonna drag race this machine, we'd be looking at a whole different setup. Yeah. Um but and if we were trying to go through the mud with huge tires, they'd be looking at a whole different setup. Yeah. So clutching is, there's a, like you were showing the springs and the weights, there's a billion different combinations you can put in these things. Yeah. And it's a matter of testing. When we used to drag race slides, we, we had literally boxes of these. And there's a hundred bucks a piece and we try them once, nope, chuck that one, it's not what we need. Yeah. Get a different one. I mean, you're literally the different springs and different all the different spots and yeah, everything works together. Yeah, if you change one thing in a clutch, you got to change everything. Yeah, so it's really yeah. Back in the day, snowball drag racing was huge. It would be just what like like ten, twenty events a summer back in the day. Yeah, every weekend you guys were at a race somewhere. Back when it was when you could modify a sled or right? before fuel injection and. No, it's too expensive. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that special tool you need in order to yeah, keep that Yeah, you just spring. need something to compress it. It's got to be long enough so that you can push that back down in there. Yeah. And hold it to get the snap ring on. That's why that's a little cutout in that so you can get in there with your snap ring and get in and put your keyway in. Yeah, that so. tool right there is why I didn't want to try doing this myself. <laughs> yeah, if you just had a long feather rod and a big socket, you notched out. Yeah. You make your own tool, you yeah. know, really. This is just, this is for a Polaris primary clutch, actually, and I just modified it to do these. Yep. So these splines have to line up with the splines inside the clutch. Just want to make sure it fully engages and that your washer from the factory is still in there. No, not, oh, I was going to say, no, it's not going to do it again for you. <laughs> gonna, uh, <laughs> and a lot of people think these nuts aren't all the way on because they're like, oh, look at all the threads in there. That's just the way they are. They thread in. Yeah. So that's not as bad as I thought it was. It's going to be just spread it. Should we get to go back down in there? And you just said a minute ago that the housing is better on the newer models. Yeah. You have a lot more room up there to play with. I don't know if I'll have a 600 yet because they haven't redone yeah, this yeah, one I yet. See. But some of the models that were. So, yeah, they are addressing that to make it easier. 
Because that is a super tight fit up there. Yeah. Let me see if I can get that down a little bit more first. I'm going to have to rock the belt there. down a If you just take your time, you can get it on and off without pulling the primary clutch off. There we go. And then it looks loose now because we've got that T-handle screwed into the secondary, which is allowing the belt to slide down in further. Yeah, we'll unscrew that. And then it'll, it'll put the tension back on there. Right here, Phil. Oh. Is that one way in there far enough? And then this, uh, I can show that real quick. This particular model, the end of the shaft is a hex. And that's what locks this cover on. Gotcha. So when you slide it back in, you gotta make sure that this hex is lined up with the hex in your cover. Cause you can just jam the nut on there and it's not seated right. So you gotta make sure. There we go. Yep, you can see it's. And it's then we gotta start the nut. There we go. And that's where we want to make sure we're on that shaft. It doesn't spin on us. Reverse, Reverse as well. well. You, you get to thread it past the puller, the puller threads, and then it'll go in I see. to the shaft. It'll just fall in. Oh, see? And then that's what's going to create the pressure back on our belt here. Yeah. That allows us to put it together. You can use an M6 bolt for this. So if you're but on the it's got to be threaded a long ways. So if you're on the side of the trail, yeah, that tool is, like the new snowmobiles, that's critical. Some of the clutch kits will come with a bolt. Okay. That you can just thread in here. So you need to have like a socket or something. To then you just run, use it. So usually when I did these on snowmobiles, I would just kind of keep leg on this to like. Oh well, yeah, you gotta you gotta start it up and rev it up and let it shift all the way back down. Because right now the belt is sucked down in there like it's in like. Right third now in your like third or fourth gear, so. It initially it's would way down in. Yeah, probably second gear. So we just got done doing the clutch kit on the U-Force 1000. Didn't really do much filming on that because it's basically the same exact process, just a little tighter quarters in underneath the bed there. A little harder to get a camera in there, but now we are getting ready to take off our fixed uh, poly windshield. And we're gonna be putting on this super ATV windshield from CF Moto Parts USA. Yep, just a flip up windshield. There's nothing special about like the name of it, but um, like he's like Adam's wanting is just like more of a summer breeze, right? Yeah. So like we mentioned before, these doors, which, uh, they do now make a power door. I think on the, you said the 600. Um, so the 1000 XLs, which are a four door, like a six seater. And then they are working on a set and they, they might've just been released is a power window for like your standard 1000. Yeah. So. And I don't want to invest in all new doors since I already have doors. But like I said before, the, this just does not let enough airflow in when it's 85, 90 degrees outside. So having a tip up windshield is going to allow me to vent this cab and cool it off in there. Cause otherwise in the summertime, I just take this window off as it is right now. And I run it all summer without the windshield in it, which kind of sucks for when it's raining. Right? Yeah. So it'll be nice just to open it when I need air, close it when it's raining. The only thing you have to watch out for the tip outs, which you're well aware of is like, when you're going through the woods with a tip out out, you just got to really be careful because you're in the woods all the time. You don't want to catch out branches. Those branches because yeah. you start to make those turns and like just be cautious that this is out here now. Yeah. You know, and you'll you'll show that in the video. Yeah. But um, yeah, the, like if you want like those roll down windows, like the glass ones, like the doors on that XL out front are like uh, six grain, I think, for the set. You're buying four versus two, but it's still like yeah your second four-wheeler investment you know so <laughs> yeah. it's like, uh, this this might be way more livable 
Yeah, I think uh, these doors with a tip-up windshield is going to be a lot more affordable than going with the yeah. power doors. <laughs> I agree. So we're going to go ahead and put you on a time-lapse and get this installed. Absolutely. guys we just got back from three c's recreation with both machines let's go ahead and get them fired up and see if we notice any meaningful difference in the performance the u-force 1000 i'm really just going to be putting back and forth kind of like i was snow plowing to simulate that because that's really the issue we were trying to fix with that was the jerkiness when you're switching between low gear and reverse and you notice that most when you're snow plowing or if you're running a sprayer and you're driving at low speeds basically just changing direction a lot and starting from zero to five is the issue with the U-Force we were trying to fix. And then we'll get, hop on the four-wheeler here and head up and down the driveway once or twice to see if we notice any more playful low-end torque as you're driving, see if we have any more aggressive handling and, and acceleration with the uh, C4 600 there. All right, so we'll start out in high gear. High gear was never the issue before. It was always low gear. High gear has always been pretty smooth, but we'll see. Yeah, smooth, smooth as butter in high gear. Let's try reverse now. Reverse and low gear were the issues. That was pretty smooth. This is low gear. Still a little bit of a kick. That's what we're trying to get rid of, but it's definitely better. Let's try reverse again. Yeah, see, my tires are still spinning and biting there. Try low one more time. Reverse. So, okay, initial impressions it's better, but it's still not perfect. Let's try the four wheeler. Okay, we'll start off in high gear on the C4 600. Can't really tell much going downhill. Going back uphill will be the test. First impressions, I can't tell if it's any different, honestly. I mean, it, if it is, it's subtle at best. I don't know. I want it to be better, and I might just be thinking that it's a little bit better just because of the placebo effect. Like, we did something, I know something's different and it's changed. But uh, if, if I just got on this four-wheeler and I didn't know that anything was done to it, I don't know as though I would have said, hey, that's, that's driving different than it did the other day. You know what I mean? All right, guys, I just wanted to pause right here and let you know I did call Zach from CRV Power Sports and asked him why I didn't notice that big of a change. I actually showed this footage to him, and he said, yeah, it doesn't look like it's that much different. You should be seeing a much bigger performance improvement, and he said he thinks it's because we reclocked the secondary clutch 
in position B1 and it should have been B2. So we'll have to make a follow-up video once we reclock that secondary clutch, but just keep that in mind when you hear me say what I'm about to say. All right, guys, there you go. You heard my initial impressions on the clutch kits. Well, let's talk about the windshield on the U-Force 1000 first. Love the windshield. All right, so this tip-up windshield is one improvement that I really wanted to get done before summertime because as you can see with this fully enclosed cab, really nice in the wintertime, but in the summertime, it is just too hot in here. So now there's actually multiple different settings we can do. There's, um, I can just tip it out and vent it. So let's say it's raining, but it's still, you know, 75 degrees and humid out. We can still get some venting in here in the front of the windshield. And then you can obviously open it and tip it all the way out to get full ventilation in here in the center. Now, I don't know if you saw, I'm sitting in the center of the seat because it has two clamps on either side. Those are right here. And you can see those multi positions right there. This would be all the way closed. This would be uh, vented. Um, and if you're by yourself, you kind of got to slide over to the center seat here to open and close and control both arms. Or if you've got a passenger, one can do one side, the other can do the other side. So like I said, really excited to get this done here before we start getting those 85, 90 degree days. I think that is a huge improvement, being able to flip that windshield up and get ventilation into the cab. Now, as far as the clutch kits go, I'm a little bit underwhelmed by the amount of difference that it seemed to make to me. And I think part of the problem is, is there's a lot of guys selling these clutch kits on the internet, and a lot of them are advertised on YouTube and on Facebook and all that. And I think they build these clutch kits up to do more than what they actually do. Um, so I'm just a guy here that went into it seeing all these advertisements for clutch kits on CF Motos on the internet and uh, kind of expecting it to completely change the bike and it just didn't do that. It, it was very subtle changes at, at best in my opinion. So, you know, hopefully you guys can appreciate the honesty here. And, and if you're looking at getting a clutch kit done, I would say the biggest difference I noticed is it, it did smooth out the U-Force 1000 a little bit. It's still a little jerky. It's not as smooth as I would like it. And I talked to Zach about all this on the phone on the way home. And I said, Zach, you know, I, I'm kind of between a rock and a hard place here. I want to be honest with my audience, but I also want to make your product look good. And I said, you know, honestly, I didn't notice a huge difference. You know, what, what have you experienced with that? And he said, yeah, the clutch kits in these machines, it's not going to make it as good as a Polaris clutch or a Can-Am clutch or something like that. Can't, CF Moto puts uh, CV Tech clutches in their machines, which CV Tech is one of the highest quality clutch manufacturers in the world. The problem is CF Moto puts one of their more economy clutches in these machines. Now I wanted to pause here and reiterate what Jared had said earlier in that CF Moto is continuing to improve their clutches with each model year. I didn't get a chance to drive a 2024, I wish I would have, but he says that the 2024s are much smoother than the 2022 that I have is. So even though they have the CV Tech clutch name, it's a less expensive clutch, whereas Polaris and Can-Am, they're putting very high quality, expensive clutches in it. Now, I don't know if you guys could tell, me going back and forth there, I feel like I'm kind of making a big deal about nothing. It's really not that big of a deal. It's the only gripe I can find to complain about with these CF motos is that the clutching is just a little bit off. They're still 100% drivable back in the woods. I use these things all the time. It's just the one slight annoyance I had with these machines that I wanted to try to get fixed. and. Uh, so I'm completely fine saving $10,000 on that C4 or that U-Force 1000 compared to a Polaris Ranger and having just a little bit more of a lurchy clutch. And as I have mentioned before, I have just as much invested in both of these machines as I would had I just bought one Polaris Ranger. So I am very happy with my decision. Would I buy these again? Absolutely, yes, I would. So I don't know, you guys tell me in the comments what you think, but. If you're gonna buy one of those clutch kits and you think it's gonna completely change the performance or the jerkiness or the jumpiness or, or give more low end torque to your uh, C4600, it's just not. It's gonna make it a little bit better. You may or may not notice a huge difference. That's kind of where I'm at with this. Is I didn't feel like it made a huge difference. So anyways, guys, that's where I am at with it right now with both of these machines. Full honesty and transparency, you know that's the way we go around here. Um, if you are interested in getting CF Moto ATVs and side-by-sides, 3Cs Recreation up in Chautauqua, New York, or Curran Power Sports in Pine City, New York, 
Uh, those are the two guys. Kern City provided the parts. Three C's is my local CF Moto dealer, so they did the installation for me. Um, if you're interested in side-by-sides, four-wheelers, or any aftermarket parts like that rack on the front of the C-Force or the chainsaw scabbard on the back of both machines or doors, windows, light bars, they both sell all of that stuff. I will leave links to both of their dealerships in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, give me a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.